Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by Pilma. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. Well, hello, everyone. This is Ken Hardison, and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have the privilege and honor of having Kristen David, who is a lawyer, who is an entrepreneur, who is a world traveler, and uh, just all around a very smart lawyer. So welcome to the show, Kristen. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So tell me your story, because we're going to talk about systems today. Uh, you know, and I've always uh, talked before we started this uh, podcast. I've always been a big proponent of, of uh, systems and processes and procedures. I used to be a joke at my law firm. Somebody knew what came in and they said, yeah, Hardison's got a process for how to go use the bathroom. You know, uh, it was it was that big a joke. But I mean, I, I did it for a lot of reasons. Uh, and, and I'm not going to steal your thunder, so I'll let you tell it. And, uh, you know, the reasons people need systems, process, procedures. But let's let's talk about you. How did you get to your journey? How did you get to where you are today? Well, let me break it into two parts. The first half is being a lawyer and being in the trenches and getting out of those trenches. The second half is on the fun half of what I do today and being able to, you know, live the life I dreamed of traveling and being virtual. But, um, you know, it started off as a young lawyer. I loved being in the courtroom and I actually did legal malpractice and medical malpractice defense. So that meant I was defending doctors and lawyers and uh, back in the wild west of Oregon, we were trial by ambush, no discovery of experts. So you got a lot of hours of prepping that file and knowing every angle of what might get thrown at you in trial and what experts might be showing up unexpectedly because you don't know who's coming. And um, so I was working like 85 hours a week in the law firm. And I was also doing so many of the other administrative tasks and different things. And um, I thought there's got to be a better way. Like I, you know, it, it's great to be a trial lawyer, but it's also all the management and the marketing and the, you know, managing people. Law school, as you know, didn't teach us any of those things. So I learned how to write a business plan, started executing, and in nine months, doubled my business, rewrote the business plan, doubled again. Best part was learning how to create those systems. And I am a big fan of them, just like you. They are what helped me regain my ability to not be at the office 24-7 and to know with confidence everybody knew what they were doing. So um, that was that's the biggest life aha moment that I wish somebody would have taught me like back in high school or college, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, I've always said, you know, you've got all this uh intellectual capital you paid for with all your key employees and, 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 and things. And so why not memorialize it? Yeah. It, Cause yeah. anything can happen. I mean, we just, uh, I don't know if you follow football, but you know, university of Georgia football player just got killed. I mean, it's changed. I mean, you never know. I, mean, I, I had a lawyer, I had one of my mastermind members. He died in his sleep 41 years old, about two weeks ago. You know, wow. you never, and he was just cracking it hard. He was yeah. really doing his practice. But you never know when your number's up. And, uh, you know, key people uh, I've found, and it, it, I'll ask you this question because this is not about me. Do you find when you go to law firms or businesses and want to memorialize and, and help them create these processes and procedures of stuff that they're doing that some of the key people don't want to share? They think that you're getting ready to fire, that somebody's getting ready to fire them or take their job? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I tell people all the time, like, you have to reassure your team, like, listen, we're doing this so you can take vacation. And so that if you need to step away for a little bit, that you don't come back to a nightmare. It's not because we're going to fire you because people will go into panic mode and, mm -hmm. and really hold back on sharing the information. So absolutely. That's a, that's a reality uh, base yeah. that, that people have to overcome. You know, you were talking about your business plan. I mean, that's you 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 created a vision, you created goals, you know, and, and then and then you implemented them uh however you did it. But that was one part of it, but also the systems was another part of it. 
because you cannot scale any business yeah. without systems and processes because yeah. if not, everybody's got, every lawyer's doing their own little deal. They got their own little mini law practice and you don't, yeah. you want everything uniform, well, yep. consistent, like a consistent brand. Yeah. And that's where I see lawyers and I've been to these law firms. You got 10 lawyers and they all got their own secretaries and they're only doing their own thing. And nobody, some people doing block letters, somebody doing the other ones. Yep. Somebody doing this type of discovery. Somebody's doing this. Uh, some other staff, they get to do this and come in when they want to, whatever other one's got. It's like 10 mini law firms and there's no yeah. way to scale that up or replicate that if you go to a new market, right? Yeah, yeah. So, well, and, and there's so much wasted money on time spent. Everybody's got their own naming protocol, for instance. And, and then they're all like wasting an hour, two hours, three hours a week trying to find stuff. And it's like, come on, let's, you know, streamline this baby come on get everybody on the same page that that alone saves so much money so yeah absolutely so so you know here's the deal lawyers say you know i just don't have time to do it so what do you what would you tell a lawyer like that so i definitely would say that they just have to get started and one of the things i think is great is when i i use the buy don't rent um just like renting a house you pay you pay you pay when you you quit paying, you're out, right? Nothing left. If you buy, you pay, you pay, you pay. And there's an asset left at the end of the day there. And so it's the same with a new staff member. Every single day, you explain something new to them, how to do it. And for 30 minutes each day, they should write out either the checklist, the diagram, the workflow, the procedure, some component of what they learned that day. And literally at the end of every week, you've got five new items that go in. And if it doesn't work out after two weeks or a month, guess what? You at least still have an asset there of things that you paid for that don't just go away. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'm a big fan of like just get started even in the most littlest of items and it builds up very quickly. Yeah, you know, and I think it's just so crucial for especially if you're trying to grow a law firm or any other business, you've got, it takes people and you got to train those people. And yeah. if you've got these systems and processes, don't, don't, don't you found it? It just really cuts down the time of training new people. Oh, absolutely. So in my law firm, um, so I, before I sold my law firm, I had four associates, a bunch of paralegals, and I literally could go, I knew, I knew it took about three to four days to build up a paralegal so that they were profitable and, and be able to bill a handful of hours. They might not know every single thing we do after three, four days, but they sure knew their core and how we did it, how we organized, how we, you know, named documents, all the, the basics. And um, I actually was on a vacation and I came back and this girl was like shaking my hand at the front door. My eyes about popped out. She's like, hi, I'm your new paralegal. And it was just a surreal moment where for the first time I didn't have to interview them and onboard them and like and it was she's like you know you have great systems like okay i gotta get back to work now and she just she was already profitable on day four for us already covering herself and and making the firm money so it was great yeah and i think some people lawyers in particular think well i just need processes and procedures for case management but no the case management system kind of helps you do that yeah but, yeah. but there's but there's three other parts of a business, and you just mentioned it. It's like the administrative part of yeah. hiring and firing, you know, and then managing, and then the marketing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, so when you work with these law firms, I guess you you go out and work with law firms to mm -hmm. help them do this. Uh, yeah. Do, do they say I, I just want it for the case management? You know, I don't need it for the other stuff. You know. So I will say that a number of them. Um... What works up until about one, two million, when they get to like three, four million, we definitely have to go back. I, I we'll, we'll have to restructure some of the case organization. And we've been able to streamline, talking about personal injury, um, just the way they save the documents and the discovery and saving it in a way that's going to filter straight into that mediator statement or that demand statement, right? Um, so that the information is easier to find and move across into the formula. And, and that way, the person that's drafting can focus on storytelling, which is all about telling the client story so that we get the maximum money. 
not on wasting four hours trying to find the detail of the information. That should all be organized in the same procedure the same way every time so it's easy to find, right? So we literally help somebody shave two hours off the drafting time um, on case after case after case just because intake and the, the legal assistants organized it better and did summaries so it's easier to plug and play. So yeah, just so yes, sometimes they do want a little help on the the client journey or the 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 workflows of the legal, but most of them should by at this point have a pretty good handle on how to do the work and right. and have some good workflows. But yeah, the admin, the even a little bit of financial controls, financial systems, how we get really organized with those settlement statements and always mapping out the bills and the any liens and right like the more you can be organized so here's a little story ken when i was a legal malpractice attorney i would go into these law firms and i would learn that the blown statute of limitations didn't that mistake didn't happen yesterday when we blew the statute of limitations it happened a year or two years ago because we didn't have good calendaring systems and we didn't set deadlines right um the you know, the failure to, with the settlement statement in a, in a whole tizzy because we overpaid the client, now we needed to claw back money to pay for a lien or something. That's because we didn't have good organized systems for how we document all the medical bills and which ones had liens and organize them to make sure everything was paid, right? That happened a year and a half before when we were doing the beginning of the case, not when we finally settled the case. And so, a lot of times we really have to like get these systems in place because what we do on the front end of the case is what makes it easy to settle and pay out the client on the back end of the case. And so, yeah, we just, those systems are so important on the financial aspect too, so that we don't inadvertently mess up <laughs> big time. <laughs> what do you see most lawyers when, when you try to work on what, what's their biggest, biggest uh, challenge? delegation they you know no judgment zone i was there too like you're a busy trial lawyer you're heading off to the courthouse and you're dumping another thing with probably only half of the information that you should be giving and so part of the procedure needs to be that the staff person goes whoa 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 where is this on the priority list or what resources should i use or you know just a little more intel and they can do a better job versus half-ass delegating and then they get an end result an end product that they're pissed about because it's not in the format or the way they wanted but it's it's kind of on us as the the one asking that we didn't we didn't specify enough of what we wanted um and again that's where i'm a big big fan of examples what does a plus look like so one of the first things i always encourage people is like spend a month have the whole legal team drop into an examples folder all the examples of good work whether it's you know pleadings or mediator statements or witness summaries or whatever it is and then even a low level admin assistant could go through and be like huh here's four identical mediator statements we always use this language here and then there's a blank line to fill in and then we always use this phrase in this language and you can quickly create a template like just that commonality shows us what a template looks like yeah. but i think that's one of those key things that if whether it's a seasoned attorney or a young attorney or a para or legal assistant when they can see that example here's what a plus looks like this is what we're striving for and then here's a template to help you get there quickly it just makes all the pieces fall into place versus they're hodgepodge and through everything and it, it gets all mediocre and doesn't really flow very well. So yeah, I'm a big fan of some examples and templates as well. Cool. So, you know, I said this one time, lawyer says, well, there's just no way I got time to do all these, you know, I ain't got time to create all these processes and systems. I said, well, you don't have to do it all. I said, you just got to do a little part of it. <laughs> you got to exactly. do the part. You got to do the part that if you get disabled for six months, somebody can step in and do your job. Yeah. So that's yeah. the way you got, that's the way you got to think about it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so listen, I mean, again, my, I had a paralegal that was with me for, and she'd been with me for like five or six months. And she came to me, she goes, Kristen, there's this section 
on experts. And it just says to be built. Like, can I work on that? I was like, you go for it. Like I, sometimes you earmark, you know, you want to get to a section, but that doesn't mean you are the best person to do it. Yeah. Lay it out there. Somebody else will see it and go, yeah, I can work on that part. And um, I think that's the other thing is that the owners often think they have to build it all. And it's like, no, just give some structure and be like, hey, who wants to work on this? Um, the other thing, Ken, that we do a lot and we talk a lot about is everyone has different learning styles and different things they like to do. I love writing longhand procedures, not most of people like, right? And so a checklist, just do a checklist. Some people are great at like, hey, just there's six parts to this. Or, hey, let's record this video. Here's how we do X, Y, Z, right? Um, then from there, you could get it transcribed. Then it could become the procedure, right? Then it can become a diagram of the flow of it. So, you know, different times, maybe there's somebody on your team who's a visual learner and they love creating diagrams and flow charts and workflows and great. Let them be in their happy zone and they can do all of them. They can just meet with somebody for a pair for five minutes and they can then create the workflow. And another person loves to do video. Oh, I'll jump on and teach how to do this. And great. They can be in charge of doing lots of the videos. And so I'm a big fan of letting people kind of shine with the way they like to do it. And they're, if they're all contributing, it ultimately comes together. Yeah. It, you know, it's kind of like a continual process because things change. You, you've, if somebody might come in with, we can do it better this way, you know, and yeah. I always just encourage that because just because we laid it down, don't mean it's like the 10 commandments. You know what I mean? What I mean? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It needs, it needs to be fluid, you know, where it changes. Um, but, Absolutely. But, so what recommendations do you have for lawyers if they're thinking about doing this as far as uh, what are they stories? Do you use software? Do you use, you know, I used to put, I'm, I'm a dinosaur, but I used to put mine in notebooks, but now they've got all this software. Like yeah. now, Pimmels, we use a proprietary software to keep all ours, but uh, because believe me, Pimmels, I could go and somebody would, could take my job. I'm not, yeah. a, I'm not, a, I'm not necessary anymore. <laughs> awesome. Uh, no offense uh, to you, but in, uh, in the most awesomest of, of like, that's ultimately what we want, right? As business yeah. owners to know that if we need to step away, everybody's got this they they know what to do yeah. so so listen to your question of what platforms um so i have a couple of my favorites i mean i tell people until your policies and procedures are you know 70 pages long and you know in the beginning just start with a word document like just have a, a universal place where you can just add things put things in or a folder so that people can save by name once you start getting into, you know, 50, 60 different little sub procedures, you, you really need to organize it, put it into something a little more robust. My favorite right now, and it's one that came out to kind of um, counter and rival kind of trainual and sweet process and such is a program called Waybook. It's out of the UK. They have amazing customer service. But you can do several things with it. One, you can set permissions so that you don't waste everyone's time having to read through 200 pages of stuff. You can set it so it's just the person has what access to what they need. And you can set little tests. Like at the end of a, a chapter, you can do a little quiz or something to test. Are they really absorbing and learning it? So it's, it becomes an onboarding tool, but then it's also a base it. policy and procedure. Um, it also integrates all the videos, images, um, emojis, like it makes it very interesting versus the old school, you know, my first policy and procedure manual was in word and we saved as PDF and it was, it was a lot of text. Let, let's be honest. Right. And that can make someone's eyes glaze over. I think in today's yeah, society, yeah. you have to have, you know, more visual and more, you know, kind of yeah. interactive learning. Um, but they also have, you can, uh, people can submit suggested draft changes, like, hey, here's a way to improve this section. And then we can go in and review it and approve it. Um, and it great search capabilities. Because I think one of the key things is time is money, right? So we got to like get in and find it fast. Like you got to have a robust what's search. What's it called capability. again? Waybook? Waybook. W-A-Y-B-O-O-K. And is it, it is phenomenal. Is it like .uk or .com or .com? Um, 
Let's see. Let's well, we'll put it in the notes. We can put it in the notes. Yeah, it's just dot com. And um, yeah, they're just super great guys and they're always learning and improving and, and it comes with a bunch of um, framework so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel and gets you ideas and you can leave it all in draft. And so your team only sees the stuff that's actually, you know, finalized, but um, it's just training, onboarding, um, you know, it, it just, they learn right there from the beginning where it all is and they learn they can go back to it and search and find that you know single source for everything yeah. so yeah. um you know and, and no judgment i for a while had asana for onboarding and hr partner like different you know comp and the more platforms they have to go open up it just gets yeah. confusing so the more you can like get down to one single source i think is great yeah i do too yeah of course i'm not a techie so you know <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I don't even know how to type, so we, we're not even gonna go there. But uh, yeah, you know, I like something like that because when I did mine, I had like seventy employees at one time, and when, every time we changed something, we had I felt like it was like CCH all over again. You know, all these books you open up and you, they send the statutes in, you got to take this out, put this in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seventy different deals. It was like a nightmare. Oh, and, yeah. And I love, I love the, uh, the the way you can do it with these online deals. You know, you just go there, and blah blah blah. Is yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and so, I also think it's great to get the team to like feel like they have a part of that innovation and that they can make suggested changes and be more interactive and things like that. So I think that that adds to the the culture of systems. Yeah. yeah. So summing it up, what would you say like the top three reasons a lawyer or anybody that owns a business should really have their their, their business systematized with process procedures, you know, what, well, like what, top three. First and foremost, it's going to create higher confidence with your team, which creates greater productivity, which is greater profitability. So like short term, it's going to give everyone the clarity. Here's how we want it done. They know they're getting an A plus. They can rock it out. And they, instead of them being hesitant and moseying, they're like, boom, boom, boom. And you're going to be more productive and profitable. Number two, long-term, it's an asset. When I sold my law firm, my policies and procedures were a hundred thousand dollar negotiating point. So that was just, I mean, and I, I can't divulge exactly how much I got for that asset, but it was darn near close to that for asking point. Um, but it, it, you know, like it is a long-term asset. And as we build a business and we think about spinning it or selling it to our, our team or to a new buyer, and that's a good, knowing that you're building for the future is is absolutely being a good, a good money manager and a good CEO of your business. Um, so it's worth the investment. And then number three, I think it's that peace of mind. It's what you talked about. Like if you have to step away and be with your family, you can do that. Like you can leave and not be stressed that, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? The whole thing's going to fall apart. Um, and nobody, we, you, the team doesn't want you to be trying to deal with a family member and trying to be on a phone call and what, like they want you to just step away. So I think it, it helps everyone have that peace of mind, knowing that that clarity is there and there's, you know, the system is built. So that, those are my top three. <laughs> you know, one that nobody ever talks about that much and, and kind of goes back to that fear, but you ever see employees who, like you felt like, gosh, you know, if they left, I, I just couldn't do this. You know, yeah. I feel like they're holding you hostage. They are. Yeah. They are and they yeah. ask for raises and they ask for, and then you're stuck paying them. Yeah, I, I've actually dealt with a few of, of, of clients yeah, yeah. that have and I think severe you get, problems. Yeah. If you get that intellectual capital, you know, now and then they can't hold you hostage no more. Yeah. I just yeah. don't like that. I don't like yeah. somebody holding hostage. Uh, you know. So, similar but different to that, I think, so bar rules, although it's opening up around the U.S., as you, you probably know, but um, mostly you have to be a lawyer to own a law firm, right? And so, but your family should, we can, as, especially from a multi-million dollar business owners and such, we often will put the intellectual property of those procedures into a family trust so that your kids or your family is literally being paid for the use of those procedures in the future. So if something happens, we know there's some guaranteed money, even though they can't own the law firm, 
they could own some of those, you know, the, the systems that get built yeah. and can license it and, and do some different things. So yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. All right. Well, we're running out of time. So anything that I didn't ask you or anything I should have brought up, because sometimes, you know, I get so enthralled with your answers, I'll forget the next question. <laughs> In, in, no, the, the only other thing I would throw out there is that in today's virtual world, I mean, we're all on Zoom. I run a virtual company these days, and, and I think the world is learning they can, but it also goes back to those systems. There needs to be the clarity so you have faith that everybody on your team is doing what's expected. They know what their daily, weekly, monthly checklists are of what to do. And at a quick glance, I can tap in, oh, yep, they're up to speed, no worries. You don't have to micromanage. And I think that's a fear of not having humans in the office is you can't see what they're doing. But yeah. with the good systems, you you can easily tap in and know exactly that they're doing it right. And yeah. um, yeah. allows yeah. you so much more freedom to do other things. So Yeah, and they make software now. I was actually doing a, a onboarding call with a new member of Pilma. And uh, he's asked me, he says, you know, what's your deal? And I said, well, it's your decision, I said, but mine, I, what we've seen with our PIMA members is some of them, their employees work more productive at home and some of them didn't. Yeah. So yeah. They, they use software to check and see when they were working, not working. Plus, you got your KPIs and different yep. things. And, yep. uh, you know, if they couldn't do it at home, then they try to figure out why and if they, they either fix it or either they bring them back to the office or either they fire them. Yep. You know, they have three choices. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, so what, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Pilma has been virtual since before COVID 2018. Yeah. Uh, I, I got, I, I got out of my lease when it was ended and I said, you know, I'm just going to work out of my house. Yeah. And it, it gave me a lot more ability to hire really good people. Yeah. Uh, you know, I got a, a graphic artist living in, in, in Wyoming. Yeah. You know, I've got, I've got a marketing person out of uh, Michigan, I'm, you know, Oh. Uh, I, I've got a, 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 I've got a social media person out of Florida, you know, and uh, we come together once a quarter to do our quarterly planning. And, you know, uh, I worry about, uh, uh, you know, culture, but I think if you really use Zoom and do some other things and do some team building when you're around, I think it can work out. I mean, you know, yeah. um, but we'll see. So if anybody wants to get up with you and find out more about what you do, pick your brain or whatever, how can the best way to get up with you, Kristen? Absolutely. I mean, uplevelingyourbusiness.com or go ahead and email me, Kristen, at uplevelingyourbusiness.com. I'm a pretty open book. I'm always willing to help, especially lawyers out. It's, you know, I'm still licensed in two states and always going to have a soft spot for lawyers, although we work with a lot of other business owners. And um, you know, I, I think sometimes people just have that little need, that little question, get in, get it answered. Don't sit at home frustrated trying to figure it out. Like, don't reinvent the wheel. But um, yeah, I'm just so happy you are helping them with systems too, because it's such a, I think people need to hear it from all different angles and recognize how valuable it is um, to their sanity. <laughs> to make hey, sure you taught happen. me something new today and thank you for Waybook. I have never heard of it. So that's why I like doing, that's why I love doing podcasts. I always learn something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I always learn something every time. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, so. thank you for having me, Ken. <laughs> All right. You take care. And right. until next time, this is Ken Hardison dedicated to your success. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.